What, how, how has marriage sanctified you, sort of specifically? How long have you been married now? Six, I think 60 years. It's terrific. Congratulations. Well, it's, it's shown me what can be done by ordinary human choice to love. And that's not a stoical, I'll endure this, that's a, uh, I will actively work on this wonderful vocation mm -hmm. and create and perceive all the good that I can in it. And every marriage and every family is full of, of, of some disappointments and failures, mm -hmm. especially with, with children. The mm -hmm. more you have, the more joys and sorrows you have. We have only four. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a number of friends, I have a dozen. Uh, that's, that's an amazing achievement. I've, I've written a hundred books, but I've only had four kids. Uh, to have five kids is more than to have four kids plus a hundred books. <laughs> but you love them anyway. And, yeah. uh, and it's always somewhat reciprocated. I mean, no matter how rebellious the kid is, that you're, you're the father or mother of that kid, and the kid knows it. And the kid knows that, that you gave them life. And it's the pass it on system, uh, pay it forward system. You, you, can't, you can't even try to give to your parents uh, a gift greater than they gave to you. So you give it to your kids. And if you don't have kids, you give it to the world or the church or, yeah. or your friends. And, and we all deeply know that. And we all, no matter how screwed up we are, uh, conscience isn't totally dead. And conscience isn't just negative, don't do this. Conscience is, this is what you're called to. You're called to do something. You're called to be a saint far more than you are, but that's the direction. No matter how little you climb the mountain, the direction is up rather than down. And we all know that. What's been more difficult for you, marriage or having children? Oh, children, children. I can, I mean, my, love, my wife and I are equals and, and respect each other and understand each other <laughs> far more than, than parents and children understand each other. Mm. How do you think parents can maintain their peace in light of a rebellious child, and maybe not just rebellious, but somebody who is mutilating their sexual organs, right? I, I, I come across parents who come to me and they say this is happening because of the transgender insanity. Uh, that's an extreme example, but how, how do we as parents maintain our peace as opposed to flagellating ourselves and thinking if only I had have done a better job? Which... I've got to be very honest with you. I don't know. Uh, none of our kids have deeply disappointed us. They're, they, <laughs> they, all, they have kept the faith. Yeah. They, they still believe. Uh, and that's an unusual thing. Uh, when I was a kid, growing up as a Protestant, every family I knew was Protestant, and I didn't know a single family that had a divorce in it. I must have known 50 or 100 families. Now, as a Catholic, I yeah. also know maybe 50 or 100 families, and almost all of them are Catholic. Not a single one does not have a divorce in it. Mm. I think that's, that's a remarkable breakdown of the fundamental institution in, in civilization. Uh, th that, that can't be sustainable. We talk about a sustainable ecology. What about a sustainable human ecology? We don't have it. Uh, I don't think our society is going to last more than a couple more generations. I think it's just going to fall apart. What will that look like when it does? It might be civil war. Mm -hmm. The left and the right are increasingly angry. It might be just disillusion, like the end of the Roman Empire. It might be a reversion to barbarism. It might be just, um, you know, not with a bang, but a whimper. Mm -hmm. I love that poem, by the way. Yeah. Um <laughs> so, all right, it's easy for you since you're on your way out, but what about the, our, these young ones and these young parents with children? How are they to maintain hope? How should they live the Christian life amidst this turmoil and pessimism and insanity? Well, you have to have a, a kind of optimism and a kind of pessimism. The pessimism of realizing that you're in a decaying and decadent culture and you're going to be increasingly called upon to make heroic sacrifices mm. uh, and an optimism to realize that he is stronger yeah. and he will win in the end and we are on the winning side. We are, we are hobbits and we're facing orcs, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, God has given us the whole story, including the future. And if you look at the book of Revelation as, as future history, and of course it's highly symbolic and mystical, but it's true, 
uh, you see two things, that there's, there's horrendous stuff in the future. And Christ himself says, if, if God had not shortened those days, no one would be saved. On the other hand, uh, it's a fixed fight. Uh, the lamb versus the dragon. Uh, Arneon versus Therion. Uh, the, the bad beast and the, uh, and the innocent beast. The lamb wins. The hobbit wins. Mm. So, you, loses. so there's no way around it. You ne- you're going to need supernatural faith unless you want to fall into despair. Yeah. Yeah, because all the indicators just look bleak. Yeah. For many of us. Expect it. Mm. You know, God, God sends you to a battlefield. He doesn't send you to a garden. Yeah. We're not in the Garden of Eden. We're not tending the garden. We're trying to save people from, from death, from spiritual death. Mm. Thanks so much for watching. Please like if you liked and if you loved, subscribe.